In today's video, I'm going to share how to heal from toxic shame. I'm first going to describe the difference between guilt and shame because many times they get confused. Then I'm going to show the four signs so that you can discern if you're caught in toxic shame. And then I'm going to give you five solutions to overcome it. So let's start with the difference between guilt and shame. Guilt is a recognition that I made a choice or a behavior that didn't work for me. In other words, it's an external evaluation of something that, wow, that wasn't my best. Okay. But do you see it's, it's owning something external. Shame is an internal process. It's not that I just made a mistake. It's also that I personally am bad. So let me give you an example of how the two would look. So let's say you came out of a relationship. Somebody with guilt would go, you know, I'm a little frustrated that I didn't listen to my gut feeling. I had some indications that this might not work well. So I think what I'm going to do is put a plan in place and learn more about why I'm not following my gut feeling and address that. Do you see it's an honest assessment of, of a situation and putting a plan in place to address it. It's recognizing I made some, you know, perfectly imperfect mistakes, but I'm not bad. Shame, someone coming out of a relationship with shame would go, God, I'm so stupid. I'm such an idiot. Why am I just always picking these loser men or women? And so they're just really belittling themselves. And I want to go deeper into this so you can see if this is, if you're struggling with toxic shame. And that's why I'm going to give you uh, the four keys for you to look for. The first key to look for is, do you have blame, contempt, or judgment for the other person or other people? That is a sure sign, especially in a relationship. If you're blaming them, if you were with a horrible person and you have contempt for them and judgment of them and you blame them. See, the reason we're doing that is it's a defense mechanism from how poorly we feel about ourselves. We don't want to look at ourselves. We don't want to face ourselves and how badly we feel that our shame core, we're so filled with toxic shame that we can't see it. And therefore all of our focus is on them. They're the evil one. There's really, it's a complete deflection away from our side of the street. And that's number two. We have an inability to take ownership for our part. And the way that shows up is look, it's really simple. Nobody gets in our life. No, person becomes a friend or we have a relationship with anyone unless we allow it. We're responsible for that. Now we don't condone and excuse their behavior. That's about them, but they would never have been able to enact that behavior towards us unless we allowed it. And that's what all the blaming and judgment and condemnation is about. We don't want to feel our part. And so that's why the focus is all on them and we can't forgive them. We are stuck in that sense of really humiliation, self-disgust, uh, and we're really taking it out on ourselves. And that's a sure sign that we're stuck in toxic shame. Number three is we are needless and wantless. People who were struggling with toxic shame, they won't ask for their needs and wants. And then they'll have a demand that people should just know. They should just know. I told them once they should know this. A good person would understand you never do that to somebody. I, I shouldn't even have to ask for it. That's a sure sign of toxic shame. It's always our responsibility to ask for our needs and wants. They will also be people pleasers and give themselves away and do everything for everybody else and then complain and have be filled with resentment about how do they do everything for everybody else. Now they may be silent in that resentment and keep it with themselves, or they may express it to all their friends or, you know, through social media or what else or anywhere else. And so it's that inability to meet their needs and wants, or even more importantly, ask and communicate their needs and wants. Their shame is so toxic that ultimately what keeps them from asking for their needs and wants is a sense of I'm not worth it. And so they hide behind the being nice. They hide behind being a people pleaser. They hide behind the makeup that the other person should know. 
And that's a sure sign that toxic shame is keeping them from truly healthy self-esteem and a healthy relationship. The fourth sure sign that we are struggling with toxic shame is that we are keeping secrets and we're being silent about our past. Many people have been through horrific things from rape, incest, abuse, and they don't tell anyone. Well, that's the shame. If we have secrets, any secret from our past, whatever it is, and we're not communicating that and addressing it, now you don't have to be public about it like me. You know, all my shame is all across the internet. But for me, that's healthy. You, but everyone gets their own way to do it. So that's why I share so much of my story is I've made peace with my shame. And so I'm perfectly okay with talking about it. I don't need to keep it a secret anymore. Now, I'm not saying you have to do what I do, but you need someone who isn't struggling with toxic shame has a confidant, whether that's a professional or a friend, but they don't keep their secrets and their shame and their perfect imperfections or the trauma that they've been through a secret any longer. So now the question is, how do we heal our shame? Well, this is a multi-layered process and this video could be two hours long. So I'm gonna send you to some other videos which really get in depth on each, you know, a couple of these particular processes. The first part is we need to heal our self-esteem. And so I suggest you go watch my video, Three Steps to Love Yourself. That will give you a more in-depth process on how to heal and start changing your self-esteem. The second step is we need to find a friend or a professional to confide in. I love Brene Brown as she talks about shame. She uses the example of a Petri dish, and this is how shame works. It's how viruses work. If you take a virus and you put a drop of it in a Petri dish and you put it in the dark, it explodes. It just consumes the Petri dish. The second you bring that virus out into the light, it kills it. It's the same thing with shame. We have to expose the pain from our past. We can't keep secrets. Secrets are the death of us. And if you're keeping secrets about your pain, you are stuck in toxic shame and robbing yourself, your family, your friends, your spouse, your partner, everyone. You're robbing them of your light, okay? <clears throat> Number four, we have to begin asking for our needs and wants. We have to learn how to make the request. And it's not about getting our needs and wants. It's about learning just to express what our needs and wants are. So many people don't even know what they are. So real quickly, needs are things we need to survive. Food, clothing, shelter, money, intimacy. So we need to meet those needs and appropriately ask for them from other people. Connection, and we need to ask our employer to pay us things like that. Many people will work for an employer and allow themselves to get underpaid. They won't meet their need. They won't, you know, I have clients that only had a couple of items of clothing that they wore repeatedly in their closet. They wouldn't meet their need around that, okay? Wants are different. Wants are things that bring us joy. But a person, I should have added this, a person who's stuck in toxic shame generally pursues their wants at the expense of their needs. So here's what that looks like. High credit card debt, They'll, you know, bankruptcies, they'll, because they feel such low self-esteem and so much toxic shame, they'll go on trips, they'll take themselves out, shopping sprees, all these different things to try and medicate that hole. Well, do you see, if I'm pursuing that want and I'm, and I'm spending too much money, or it could be sex or many other things, I'm doing it at an excessive level, now it sacrifices my needs. It's like, I use this example all the time, there's this, Mercedes Maybach, Maybach, don't know how you say it. It's beautiful, but it's like four or $500,000. That's a want, it would bring me joy, but if I bought it, I'd be living on the street. It would sacrifice my needs. Now, I know people don't like this, but I love to drink Coca-Cola. Just brings me so much joy. Well, at 80, 90 cents a can, it doesn't sacrifice my needs. So that's what to start healing is we have to start asking for our needs and wants and start pursuing them as well, all right? Step number five, this is key. We have to reconnect to our body because toxic shame is actually a separation from our authentic self and our soul. And so many people with toxic shame can't feel. 
They're not in touch with their body. So I'm gonna give you a couple of techniques to start reconnecting to your body. The first one is has to do with proprioception. That's our body's ability to feel space and feel itself as it moves through space. So a suggestion is take your hand and as slowly as possible, start to make a fist. Now, what most people will do is they'll focus on the feeling in their fingers and that's a detachment. Feel what's going on in your body. Like many people, they'll start to notice, oh my God, my stomach is tight. It's filled with fear or it may relax, but we need to reconnect to the inner self. That's what's been lost in shame. So that's something you can do. Like the way I work out. When I work out, I don't count how many reps. That's dissociation. Well, all I'm focusing on is the feeling of my muscles pushing the weight, whatever it is. And then eventually I just stop. I just, uh, I notice myself stop. Like I'm so in touch with my body. That's a healthy way to work out. Most people work out to further detach. They don't realize that it's actually uh, them creating even more avoidance of the shame. So whether you do yoga, run, whatever, pay attention to your body, feel the inner workings of the feelings in your body as you do the physical activity, all right? The second thing, I've talked about this in other videos, is titration. Notice when you're in shame, you tend to look down, shoulders slump, there's a sadness, there's a body posture. Again, it's a feeling in our body. So allow yourself to go into that place and ask yourself, what if I allowed this feeling and this posture to get a little bit bigger, a little bit more sad? Now ask yourself, what if I felt like, what would it feel like if I turned that around? What if I sat up straight, brought my shoulders back, lifted my head up? What's my body feel like now? Completely different. Now go back and just vacillate between the two because toxic shame, we're stuck in that collapsed position. And this helps us shift out of it. So there are the tips for you to help you turn around your toxic shame and diagnose if you have it. And also tell the difference between guilt and shame. I hope that helped you. If it did, please like it, comment, share, subscribe. And as always, enjoy the journey.